Welcome back, everyone, to Life is Good with Tuda. Let's continue our discussion with our guest. Um, let's shift a little bit. Yeah, certainly. And so uh, your name, one of my um, uh, podcasts was about your name. So what's in a name? How your name, family dynamics. And so with that, so with my family, uh, I tell everybody every RLW and all of this stuff. And so you have all, you and I've talked about this, but one thing that we always talk about with you, Hector. And so uh, when Hector was applying for the, a job in our department, our boss, like, I want you to meet Hector. And I never got over to see him in where he was. And so he came over and, and I'm at my desk and he said, Hey, I'm Hector. I looked around like Hector. <laughs> you look like a Hector. So in my mind, I had an idea of what Hector looked like. So right. yeah. Which and, is interesting. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm serious. And so I think you get that probably a lot or mm, I don't know. I, I think even with Erica, she said the same thing. She assumed Hector was Hispanic. Hector is African American, black, and so it was really interesting. Yes, so sure, I, I am an African American male. <laughs> <laughs> if my if my voice did not tell, I need to put my very white tone on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so share with the name, and we've talked about this from just generally how you came about with your name, and yeah, and that's that's so that's interesting because I've gotten that for the last ten years since I've been right. down here, um, and I guess being from New York, it's not an uncommon thing. Okay. Um, because I come from a very diverse, uh, diverse place on Long Island where, you know, you go down the street and there's Jamaicans and Puerto Ricans and Dominicans and, you know, a whole bunch of all these bl- different types of black folks um, mm-hmm. with Caribbean and Hispanic and Latina sounding names. And so, you know, Hector was a common name. Right. Um, um, actually, my uh, but how I got my name was my godfather, a good friend of the family good friend of my grandmother's actually who at this point my grandmother's sort of the matriarch she was responsible for naming a lot of the grandkids Mm -hmm. and so uh he passed right before i was born Mm -hmm. and so um her being the decision maker and being really close with him um and i guess ironically enough ultimately us being me being her favorite grandchild she ended up naming me after him um and so that's how i got this sort of weird name father wasn't it was uh, it, it, was, it was to be my he was to be my godfather, okay. but he um he passed before I was born. Okay. So, um, but I was past that name, uh, and it just kind of something that you know you grow up, kids are mean. <laughs> he didn't, and he didn't realize it was like a thing about it until you moved until until I started asking questions and yeah. you know learned that you know okay there was a good friend of the family who you know I obviously made an impact enough for somebody to say I'm going to name one of my you know grandkids after him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I looked into over the years, I started appreciating my name. When you look into the sort of the Greek um, breakdown and historical roots of the name, mm-hmm. it becomes something I started wearing as a badge of pride. OK, um, because ultimately I'm named after what it was to be my godfather, my father and my grandfather. OK, so it's a legacy that's there. And then you have a son that you name. Yes. H2. H2. We call him H2. He's Hector. The Hector, second of the second. And so H2, I like the name H2, yes. even though I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. Naming somebody as, uh, a second as opposed to a junior. I think it was supposed to be more of like, you know, grandfather to grandson. Well, I think you can do two. We were talking about that uh, last night. Junior usually is like, does Hector H2 have the same all three? Yeah. So you could do H. He could be the second or junior. Yeah, he is, it's Hector William David Falk II. That's, that's, his a, name. that's a strong name. It, you know what it is? And that's for a, a strong... long time, I didn't appreciate it. Um, and as I've gotten older, I've started making sure that that W and that D is prominent. And mm-hmm. like, people yeah, that's probably a strong like, name. Who, who you think you are? I'm like, ah, I'm just. <laughs> that's a strong name. So, I... But yeah, I did pass that down. Um, and the it, it sounds bad, but the premise was I wanted to kind of give. I dealt with it, so I wanted to kind of pass. <laughs> you want your son to deal with it but he couldn't go by h2 <laughs> well i was big on trying to start a, a legacy yeah. like we talked about the roots thing is for, for me was big um mm-hmm. legacy is big um we talked i talked to him about naming his son h you know h3 so yeah we already have those conversations even though he's only eight right you know, limited conversations but no you know, he'll just, remember just those are seeds of why thought. he was you know yeah. given the name. he had a naming project recently 
but we had to explore all of that. And so oh. I had to explain to him where, why he got his name, this very conversation about three weeks ago. So. I think that's important though, especially with kids to understand the importance yeah. of your name. Yeah. I, well, I remember not being able to answer any of those questions <laughs> when I had that name in assignment when really? I was a kid. Oh yeah. I distinctly remember not. And that's when I, that's when the sort of search began. I was like, okay, well that's when I realized, oh, okay, well at least, you know, Hector in the Greek and Roman used, means warrior. Right. And so I at least used to rely on that as sort of my baseline until I learned out the background. So yeah, the historical context of it. Yeah. Definitely. And so um, you have H2. And then talk, share with, I don't know if you want to share how uh, with your siblings, or was it your aunt, Nim, with the Lings? Oh, <laughs> so interesting you say, what's in, the, what's in the meaning of a name? Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, like my wife, you mm-hmm. know, it's interesting because my wife is named, with, with the exception of H2, which she gave to me. All th- other three, the other three of our kids, all start with an A, you know. Uh, um, and so she's she's very much in that family. Oh yeah, because he said here in this area we go R's, R R's, R J's. Yeah, you start everybody get the first initial. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same, and that must be a Texas Southern thing. I don't know, but Oklahoma maybe because I'm from <laughs> Oklahoma and I noticed it here too. So yeah, yeah. I don't. And, and for us. In, at least in the northeast it was more like you would see some of that but it, i'm used to like similar name like sounding names like charlene and jolene mm-hmm. aline yeah shalina these are all my sister's names yeah you yeah. know that my that my aunt and i'm like what in the world so she didn't stay with the first initial you it's know she started that. off with a but it went from aline to charlene to shalina to Jolene, Evelyn. Yeah, you know, so I it's thought that was interesting. Yeah, I don't know why we, yeah, <laughs> is that I, a cultural thing that we do? Maybe a cultural thing. I, I don't know, but like in my family, that's all I know. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I was sharing with uh, my husband that uh, sometimes people use um, their maiden names to name kids too, like their mom's maiden name, and then that starts a trend. Interesting. Um, I've heard that as well. Um, but it just depends on where you're raised. And I have my sister. Well, we don't say sister in law, we say sister, but her name, her middle name is her sister's first name. My, my, um, my brother's, my baby brother's wife. Uh, wife. Mm-hmm. That's something that, so like your middle name is your sister's first name. And so different people have different ways to honor names and so you just it's interesting and they're from Arkansas and so yeah. I don't know if that's something that is an Arkansas thing but I had never heard that before before she shared that with us so right I that, think that that's is, interesting that is because the only thing I could identify in my little fragmented family was really big and, and little mm. it seemed like like we talked about before there's always a big somebody and a little somebody who was oh, named after yeah. and so for me i got a big Irvin and my brother a little Irvin and a little Irvin. Okay. then there's a big yannica and a little yannica and then you know a big patrick and a little you just realize like oh okay this is just yeah. something know, that that happens for whatever reason that we do in our little family it's very yeah. unique very what's in a name maybe it's a like you said culture and how the importance of naming your kids something that you feel proud of or has a connection to so what about all, how do you feel about all these Clearly non-historical names. Like, which one? Give me an example. <laughs> like all these new names. Like. Longest are spelled grammatically correct. I'm a little. Cl- like, 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 like Shaquandrelia. Something like that, that, you know, mama, that wasn't mama's name. That wasn't granny's name. Just being is it, unique. Is it just, yeah, is that, because I see that that's another trend that a lot of the, the young, well, the, the younger generations are doing it seems like yeah. I don't want to I don't want to name after older folks who've come but I want a very distinct name for this particular child yeah what's your take on that I'm just curious so my take is you gotta go out your way to be because so many extra. people who have lived and so many names right that people are going it feels like going out of their way to combine <laughs> to words to be different and, yeah and I'm just curious what your um, thoughts are on that Sometimes I, it's like a chalkboard feeling like, and I just have to go with it because it's not my child. Um, if it was a relative, I probably would express myself and then keep it moving. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want something that, but see, this is the interesting thing. That's all the child knows. You know what I mean? So they don't know that it's different. Do you think they know that it's different? 
I think that I, well, kids are not, you know, you start looking around and start paying attention to everybody else's name and roll call. I think the biggest thing is having your name called in school. And then know? that's when you know, <laughs> mine's you a years, little different. You go through years of yeah. Adam and Johnny and et cetera. So. Yeah. So this is what, long as it's grammatically correct, um, I would see Tony spelled differently and is a E. Mm-hmm. Without an accent, an E, or if it's T, you know, so I'm trying to figure out the, the grammatic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but they want you to call him Tony. Mm-hmm. But they want you to make sure you put that. Yeah. So, on there. yeah. It could be something simple like that. And then you just try to figure out, well, like my niece, and she, not to say anything about her, but but, her, but she has an accent over her A. So it's a Tay. But if you leave that accent off, it's uh, right? Okay. If you leave an accent off of a, it's not, it's no longer a. Right. It's uh, right? Yeah. So that's important when you're trying to pronounce people's name. So I think well, that. Well, that's a whole other conversation is what is the expectation? <laughs> so my expectation, so you know, my expectation is if you do a, <laughs> one of those unique long names that it's, enun- you can what is it where you can grammatically hyphenate it and understand how to pronounce it? Right. And right. you can't get upset when people pronounce it incorrectly because it is a unique name. Well, I mean, in fairness, what is it, you know, well, I guess that's assuming that her name, every name is not unique, right? Yeah. You make the argument that every person who's So what would we is, consider unique? Right. A made a up name? Other, right. Or you putting two and three names together? Right, I think where's the line on that? Right? I don't know. And then that's why I said, what's the expectation on Maybe, me? Maybe, can we leave it at 12 digits? 12, <laughs> 12, 13 digits. If you go over 12, 13 letters, then we might need to be looking at why are we doing this. It my, might be two names. My favorite is people who say, hey, my name is, you know, Aslam Alaikum, but call me Matt. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Okay. Matt. <laughs> Matt or whatever. They just, the point is they keep it simple, right? Yeah. That is my. That, keep it simple. K-I-S-S. You know, for me, I, people don't have to do that. But for people who know, okay, I have a difficult name. Let me, you can just call me Sam. You don't have to, you know, figure so out. So you the, appreciate the it. I appreciate, I appreciate those that. folks who, who are. So I'm really, really sensitive toward, and I talked about this before, making sure I call you your right name. Um, and pronounce it correctly because I want you to pronounce mine correctly. So if I'm saying it wrong, please tell me. Don't just go with it and I answer to it. And later on, I find out it's wrong. And so uh, I'm guilty of that, though. That you would just go with it. Yeah, but you just go. With, how does people mispronounce your name? Oh, I've been called. They don't mispronounce it. They just call me completely different names. Like what? <laughs> like Matthew or Robert. Because Where does that come from? I think it becomes because Hector doesn't fit like we talked so about. So they say they're going to so name they just, you they something. They're just going to give me something. That they, That's nice of you. Yeah, but for me, but I'm, I not would probably count. My, I'm not tied to. There's no. I don't know. There's no arrogance with my name. So with me, it's different. My dad was really big on don't answer to your name. So I think that's my first uh orientation to the importance of my name so I think it's the historical part of it so uh my dad I told this story share this story on one of my earlier podcasts he came in I was probably second or third grade and the teacher kept calling me Veronica Veronica and you know (laughs) as a child you just kind of go with it and you think okay it doesn't sound right but okay so my dad said that's not her name he said her name's Veronica and then he let me know you don't answer to anything but your name. That's not hard for her to get your name right. So guess what? The teacher never said Veronica again, though, from that point on. So I think for me, <laughs> I, I I think some people's like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. If I say Veronica and you come back Veronica, I mean, someone's not listening to me. <laughs> and that happens. And you've been in means when I've they done, come I've back. I've done that to people. So yeah. I'm, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> so is it that you're not listening? So tell me what that is. Is it that you're not listening? Typically, typically for me personally, it's because I'm not in the moment. Right. I'm not engaged in you tell me your name. I got I just got some bad news. So something pressing on my brain, and but I'm interacting with this individual, right. and so I'm trying to be respectful of the fact that you're you in front of me. You never call me Veronica, though. No, but that's because you know, 
That's a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I know in certain situations, but meeting that people want you know for the first time or second right. time. Now, if we've been around each other yeah. and you just don't get my name right, something's a know. little off there. I think. Yeah, I mean, it speaks to your level of care and and connection and engagement. I think that's huge for me with people. It's like I feel like Carla. Well, I feel like Carla used to call me Winston for a long time. I'm, I'm almost certain Winston. She did. Yeah, you Winston do not look like, like a that. Winston. I've been called some interesting. I'm like, you do not look I, like you look like a Hector to me now, because that's all. I would never put Matthew or anything else with well, you now. I'm glad you say that because my wife finally admitted to that. Finally, after all these years, she <laughs> said you look like a Hector. <laughs> yeah, because you know I what tell she her met, I agree with her. When she met, um, we have me and my wife have been communicating for at least four months before via, you guys met. Via, yeah, we met at work, and so we were communicating over work without realizing. So she comes down uh, one day where I'm working, looking for Hector <laughs> after four months of communicating back and forth. And then finally, you know, we meet and she figures out, like, oh, this is the same woman I had been seeing, um, you know, in passing. And but didn't know we had been communicating because I didn't know her name. Okay. And she just clearly didn't know. She couldn't make the connection that she With was talking Hector. to a black man named Hector. And it just was not. I'm possible. telling you, it's just. It's yeah, no, she she yeah. gets she gets a kick out of telling that joke to her friends about how we met. But now yeah. she says, "See, for me, because I." No, she hates my name. Let me. She doesn't, <laughs> does she? She does. Well, she may not admit it, but I think she does. Yeah, mainly because I gave it to her. I messed up her naming, her naming function with all the But then you connect the with the H. Yeah. So yeah. that's important. Yeah, for me it was. But yeah. For her, she was like, "Ah, it happens. Yeah. It happens." I I hear about that with some. It's yeah. a compromise, and because she named our meaning. she named the other kids. I only got one, and then that was it. So, and so the rest, I'm so give the names of your. Uh, your. So we got my oldest is Aiden. Uh huh. Then we got H two, little Hector, and then we got um, Alec and Elise. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Yes, thank and you. she's a uh, she's running the show. Elise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Elise is running it. Yeah. She's a little DST. She slept on the couch to put it in perspective uh, yesterday. We go looking for her. She's not anywhere around. And she's on the couch. She's on the couch with a cover and she done pulled up a blue blanket and she done passed out. And she's said, this from a long day of work. Long day of running around. Yeah. That's <laughs> a, so how old is she now? Uh, two. She she's turned two, two in August. Going right? on. Going on 30. Yeah. 35. Something oh. like that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she's yeah, starting she's to a, talk and mimic everything we say, so which is an interesting time. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to w- watch my words because <laughs> she will repeat. Yeah, right. Kids yeah. take over. It's so amazing how they absorb and watch everything you do, and you, yeah. they become a sponge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yay. Okay, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with our guest on the Life Is Good with Tuta Show. Oh, 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 